Hello, and welcome to our workshop on how to hack the hidden job market. My name is Spencer Atkinson, and I'm a career advisor at the Internship and Career Center. In this workshop, we will start by defining what we mean by hidden job market. From there, we will discuss three hacks, identifying professionals to talk to, aka networking, then asking professionals questions, aka informational interviews, and finally, strategies for getting your foot in the door. So first, what is the hidden job market? Think of the job market like an iceberg, where the publicly advertised jobs are the ice that's visible above the surface. Then there's a whole lot of jobs hidden below the surface, and depending on the industry, we know that as many as 80% of all the available jobs out there are never advertised to the public. So if you only ever look for jobs by applying to the publicly advertised positions, you're missing out on tons of opportunities that can only be accessed through the strategies that we're talking about in this workshop. So today we'll start talking about how to hack the hidden job market with hack number one, identifying professionals to talk to. In other words, we're talking about networking. People sometimes have negative connotations with the word networking because they think it's opportunistic or inauthentic or sleazy. And when done badly, it can be all of those things. But when done well, it can be an incredibly powerful strategy for advancing toward your career goals. First, networking allows you to establish mutually beneficial relationships with people in your areas of interest. You may think that at the beginning stages of your career that you can't possibly provide a mutual benefit to professionals in your field. But remember that you have a whole lifetime of experience, skills, and perspectives to offer. So as you begin making connections with people, you will see the ways that you can help them as much as they can help you. Networking is also about just talking to people and building sincere relationships. There isn't just one way to quote unquote network, so it's important for you to show sincere interest and curiosity. It's also an opportunity to learn more about a profession. One of the most powerful ways to learn about possible career paths is to talk to people who are a bit further down that path than you. Along those lines, it's a great source of advice and referrals. One of my favorite questions to ask professionals who are further along in their career is, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you were in my place? Another great question is, who else should I be talking to? And networking shouldn't be something you just turn on and off, depending on whether you have something to gain from a person. As cheesy as it might sound, at its best, networking is a way of life, as in a way that you think about the world and bring curiosity and interest to every connection that you make. So there are three big things that you can achieve by networking. The first is that it helps you clarify your career goals by learning more about what it takes to succeed in certain positions or occupations. It also introduces you to possible mentors, people who may or may not have a job to give you per se, but who can offer crucial wisdom that will help you make the most of opportunities that come your way. And perhaps most relevant to the hidden job market, networks are a great source of referrals for those jobs that may never get advertised to the public. A quick story about this last point. A friend of mine has worked in communications for several years, and he's developed a strong network of past clients, coworkers, professional peers, and colleagues. He was recently laid off due to a dramatic downsizing of his company. He shared on his LinkedIn profile that he was seeking opportunities, and a former client from about five years ago reached out to let him know that she had a position that she needed filled immediately. Because she knew the quality of his work, and because he had stayed in contact with her in the years since they worked together, he was able to secure that position within weeks of being laid off from his last job. Stories like this are exactly what I mean when I talk about the power of networks. So the first place to start is to identify who is already a part of your existing network. You might think you don't have a network yet because you haven't really started your career, but it's amazing how those connections you have from social circles, family, and other groups can be a potential source of information and opportunity. Start to gather ideas about your existing contacts from sources such as family, friends, and neighbors, faculty, advisors, and classmates, former colleagues, for example, from a part-time job or summer internship, people you do business with, such as your dentist, your hairstylist, or your favorite barista, and any clubs, teams, groups, organizations, faith communities, etc. We suggest doing some brainstorming and write out a list of everyone you can think of from the above categories. From there, 
you can then start thinking of ways to expand your network. For example, you might do some intentional outreach to UC Davis staff and faculty who might help you learn more about your areas of interest. These folks are often very excited to hear from you, so it's an easy first step in expanding your existing network. You can try attending a professor's office hours or visit the drop-in hours of some student service or department. You can also attend career fairs hosted by the ICC where you can speak to employers, recruiters, and fellow students with similar interests. Career fairs happen multiple times throughout the year and the ICC offers workshops ahead of time to help you learn how to maximize that opportunity. Another great way to expand your network is to join campus organizations, especially those with a career-related theme or area of interest. Similarly, you might look into professional associations, which are basically clubs for people within a particular profession, such as the American Society of Landscape Architects or the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. Often there's a discounted membership fee for student members in these associations. And of course, you can use platforms such as LinkedIn and Handshake to identify and reach out to people based on shared interests and mutual connections. When expanding your network through targeted outreach to specific individuals, a great tool to have in your toolkit is the elevator pitch. The idea is that it's an introduction about who you are that is short enough to be shared in the length of time you might ride in an elevator with someone, roughly 30 to 60 seconds. It should include these key elements. Your name, major and year, the goals you have for your career, one or two experiences from your past that the person you're speaking to will find relevant, a quick wrap-up sentence, a question that opens it up and turns it into more of a conversation. You might also include some sort of suggestion as to how you might like to follow up, such as scheduling a phone conversation for a later date. The whole thing, when you put it together, might sound something like this. Hello, my name is Alex Aggie, and I'm a junior completing a bachelor's degree in managerial economics with a minor in communications at UC Davis. I'm interested in a marketing internship in the retail field. During college, I was involved in the marketing and finance club and intramural sports where I developed skills in leadership. I also interned at the state capitol where I discovered that I really enjoy finding ways to connect with people, especially through social media. I'm very interested in your background with retail marketing and I was wondering if you would be willing to speak with me about your experience and your organization. So as you develop your own elevator pitch, it's important to keep in mind some tips about effective verbal communication. Your pitch will only be as effective as the manner in which you deliver it. Remember to enunciate clearly and project loud enough to be heard, especially at career fairs and networking events. Also try to speak at a moderate pace. It's natural when you're nervous to speak more quickly than usual, so try to be mindful of this. You really want to focus on conveying the important information as concisely as possible. Often the person you're speaking to has only a few moments to spare, so you want to maximize what little time you have. Once you get the person engaged in a natural conversation with you, you'll want to ask probing questions in order to learn as much as you can. And of course, if you ask questions, make sure to let them respond. Sharing airtime is essential for this to feel like a conversation. You can show how engaged you are through active listening strategies such as paraphrasing and affirmative sounds. Once you've come up with some general ideas about how you would like to introduce yourself in your elevator pitch, it is absolutely essential that you practice it out loud. You can practice with a friend or a housemate, or even just in front of a mirror. The important thing is to speak it aloud so you can get it to a place where it sounds natural and authentic. So, take two to three minutes right now to pause this video and practice saying your elevator pitch aloud. When you're ready, we'll move on to the next section of the workshop. So now we'll continue talking about how to hack the hidden job market with hack number two, asking professionals questions. The strategy we will use for this is something called an informational interview. Informational interviews are strategic conversations with professionals in your field of interest. We recommend you do this face to face, but phone or video calls can also work when an in-person conversation isn't possible. They typically consist of a 15 to 20 minute meeting where you ask questions about their experiences, the company they work for, and the career field as a whole. You can use a variety of methods to contact them and request to set up a meeting, including email, phone, or LinkedIn. And you'll actually find out that most contacts will be happy to help with this. Basically, they get to just talk about themselves for 20 minutes, and people typically enjoy doing that. 
there are a lot of benefits to informational interviews. Again, this form of networking is a great tool for exploring possible careers and helping you identify your own professional goals. They also give you the opportunity to learn up-to-the-minute information about what's going on in a career field or industry. No amount of internet research can replace the on-the-ground perspective of someone currently doing the work. These conversations are a great starting point to what can become a long-term professional connection, which helps you expand your network in a way that is genuine and authentic. And they're also great practice for job interviews because they enhance your ability to speak confidently and clearly about your skills, experience, and professional goals. One method of reaching out to professionals to request an informational interview is to send the person a direct email message. You can also adapt this strategy when sending a request to connect on LinkedIn. Start by stating how you heard about the person, then provide a brief introduction with some of the same pieces of information you would include in your elevator pitch. For example, you could mention some details about your education, a few relevant skills and experiences, your enthusiasm for the professional's background or occupation, or some personal qualities that are relevant. Then request the opportunity to meet for a 15 to 20 minute conversation, including a proposed time frame for when the meeting would occur. Another approach is to pick up the phone and call them. This can really help you stand out from the crowd because it is much less passive than email. In this case, you would basically follow the same format as an email but it's also a very good idea to be clear that you are not requesting a job from this person. This is just a conversation to learn from their experience and gain any wisdom or advice they wish to offer. Once they understand that, most people will be willing to say yes. You may need to speak first to a reception desk or some other gatekeeper, so be prepared to explain the reason for your call prior to being connected with the right person. In preparation for every informational interview, you should come prepared with a list of questions you want to ask the person. There are some great lists of sample questions available out there, but we also encourage you to tailor your questions to the particular person, organization, or industry in order to get the most out of the conversation. Also, as you speak with the person, you want it to feel like the conversation has a natural flow, which you can accomplish by sharing some of your own perspective or by asking follow-up questions to go deeper into a particular topic. Demonstrating genuine curiosity and engagement will make the experience more rewarding for the person you're speaking to. And, before you end the conversation, the two most important questions you can ask are, may I stay in touch with you? And, can you recommend other people I could speak to for further insight? These questions can go a long way towards strengthening your future professional network. Another approach to generating informational interview opportunities is to start with your existing network. Once you've identified what you think your potential career path will be, a great strategy is to start talking about your goals with every person you know. It's amazing how often a cousin or an aunt or a neighbor will say, Oh, I know someone who does that. Let me introduce you. These direct person-to-person -person connections can be a powerful source of referrals for further networking conversations. Okay, so you've identified professionals to talk to, you've made a bunch of new connections, and you've had some great conversations. The third strategy for hacking the hidden job market is hack number three, getting your foot in the door. The goal of getting your foot in the door is to deepen your connection to the people within a professional network so that when career opportunities come up, they can easily identify you as a strong candidate. There are lots of ways to do this. Internships are one of the most powerful ways because they allow you the opportunity to actually do the work and learn firsthand from supervisors and mentors who might have full-time openings later. Volunteering is another great option, whether it's for one-time or long-term projects. Especially for employers that depend on volunteers to help them achieve their mission, this can be a powerful way to demonstrate your commitment to a particular organization and to show off your skills in practice. Another, lesser-used strategy is to shadow a professional for a day. This can sometimes be a good intermediate step after an informational interview and before an internship or other long-term commitment. In addition, the ICC and some campus departments host career treks, which are basically field trips to a particular company or worksite. Attending a career trek and engaging with employers in their workplace can be a powerful way to make a first impression. And finally, consider short-term or contract jobs as a way to gain entry into an organization. These short-term roles give you the opportunity to learn the workplace culture, to demonstrate your fit with the needs of the organization, and to develop positive relationships with would-be colleagues. Of course, once you land any of these opportunities, it's up to you to make the most of it. 
by demonstrating your skills, competencies, and professionalism. Getting your foot in the door is really just the beginning of your career journey. So let's review. In order to hack the hidden job market, you can start identifying professionals to talk to by expanding your professional network. Then you use informational interviews as a strategy to ask professionals questions and learn more about the field. And from there, you can activate some of those connections to get your foot in the door. However, we always like to reiterate that developing and activating a professional network that can work for you takes time and patience. We also recommend that you get your marketing materials ready, such as a resume, cover letter, and updated LinkedIn profile. When speaking to professionals about your interest and experience, they might, from time to time, ask you to share your materials with them. You can make a strong impression by having them already ready to go. And we want to leave you with one final tip, which is the importance of staying in touch. Once you've established contact with someone through a networking conversation or a foot in the door, you can stay connected with them by sending an occasional email update or by engaging with their posts on LinkedIn. This allows the relationship to continue developing naturally so that you are the first person they think of when a relevant opportunity comes up. So that concludes our workshop on how to hack the hidden job market. Just a reminder that the ICC is available for drop-in advising as well as appointments. To learn more, visit icc.ucdavis.edu. Thank you.